Babbity Unicorn here with another uh, another little something on dark femininity. As you come in, if you could please take the time to go on ahead and like the video. It does so much for me. Thank you. So, in thinking about dark femininity, mulling over that concept in my mind, I started to think of Mary J. Blige. Again, for me, giving you the exact definition of dark femininity is tough, but what I can do is describe it and make you feel it, okay? Dark femininity. Remember when Bernadette from the movie Waiting to Exhale, you know, she's been supporting her husband for 11 years. She put all her dreams aside to... Uh, build his company. She became his secretary and, and everything in, in his life, you know, the mother of his kids. Um, and then of course, you know, um, after she helped him build his business, he returns the favor by, you know, cheating on her with a white woman and, um, just, I, I mean, it's really sad, but basically, she throws all his stuff out of the house, starts a dumpster fire in, in, in his car, burns it, and, you know, cuts off all of her long, beautiful hair and starts her life over again. And it was from that darkness and that depth of dark emotion that she experienced that she became, that she was able to get to the light. Again, you have... Um, order out of chaos, right? She has this very chaotic moment where she's like, but I gave, but I gave, but I did, but I, but I obeyed, but I, I everything you wanted, I gave you. I, 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 I denied myself. I hurt myself. I put myself to the side to put you first. And, and this is what you do. She goes the hell off. And in those moments are dark femininity and then finally, she liberates herself because she had been growing her hair all those 11 years because he liked long hair. She did it for him. But for her, she was like, no, nah, forget that. I want a pixie cut. Don't nobody want to deal with all this hair. And, you know, she goes to the club. She's smiling. She's happy. But it was Mary J. Blige who sung that song. 11 years of sacrifice. Besides the kids, I have nothing to show. Wasted my years of full of wife. Right? So, like, Mary J. Blige has a way of digging. I mean, I mean, plowing into the souls of women of all races with the lyrics and the passions of her song. Sometimes I remember when Diddy, the devil, I remember when Diddy was just like, yo, you know, I never wanted Mary J. Blige to have some kind of a smooth sound. I never went back over the raspiness of her voice and tried to clean it up in the studio or auto tune, auto -tune or anything like that. Like that roughness needed to be there. She was supposed to be that girl who's a little bit rough around the edges. She's really and truly a diamond in the rough as in she's literally a diamond with the rough still on her. And so many of us women are that way. So many of us African-American women, so many of us low income, so many of us women who come from the quote unquote wrong side of the tracks, like we're that diamond. And it's obviously obvious that we're a diamond, but we still have that rough around us. That rough is that dark, crusty coal of dirt, you know? Like it's clear that she's worth so much, but you can still see that, you know, Life is carving that stuff off of her and ouch, it hurts, you know, ouch, it hurts. He hit me. Ouch, it hurts. He cheated on me. Ouch, it hurts. I buried my kid. Ouch, it hurts. I got a divorce. Ouch, it hurts. You know, I lost everything I had and had to file bankruptcy and, and whoop, -de whoop, 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 whoop. Ouch, it hurts. I got cancer and I lost all my hair, my eyebrows and my eyelashes and it was so pretty. And now I feel like a, you know, that pain that you go through to become that person. I remember I knew a girl, you know, she had cancer and, um, you know, she went through that level of wearing hats and wearing wigs and then finally, you know, bald headed like a full moon shining. Like that song, I Am Not My Hair by India Ari. She was just like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm great. Right. But she went through all that pain of being different and being that black sheep, being that odd man out to, you know, it just developed such beautiful character in her that, I mean, men were just, you know, just, just attracted to her like a moth to a flame. Woman's got no hair, no eyebrows, no eyelashes, you know, just a white woman walking around doing her thing at my university. And I mean, there was just something about her that was so intriguing. It was hard to keep your eyes off of her. And it wasn't, you know, at first, maybe in her journey, it was hard to keep your eyes off of her because she was bald, you know, but it became hard to keep your eyes off of her because her personality magnetic. Okay. 
So, I mean, again, this all for me, like, come on, you guys, Mary J. Blige, um, even that song Real Love, because that was, you know, the big hit. I'm searching for a real love. Somebody set my heart free. Real love. Like even in that song is dark femininity because it's just like, where's the real love? What, what, where is it really at? I haven't located it. I keep running into the fake frugazi. Like, where is the real love? There's darkness in that song, even though it's upbeat. There's darkness in um, um, what is that song? If you just can't be without you, baby. Um, call the radio. Um, what is what is it? And it's a shame because I think that song was about Kendu, and you know that Kendu asshole took everything. I'm not supposed to cuss. Channels monetize, but I mean, he took everything from her. She went through abusive relationship after abusive relationship. Um, she just suffered so much, and you could hear it in her music. And if you were a woman who suffered through something similar, it hits you in a place where there's sometimes when a woman she can't, she doesn't have access to her tears. And so she walks around carrying that bitterness and pain and anguish. And then a song will hit you where you can finally cry it out. And that is the magic of Mary J. Blige, where she might just have a song where, where it hits you and you let it go. It's like it's like acupuncture where she just sticks you in the thing that's problematic and psh, out comes all the nonsense. And power is the end result power being empowered self-love that you couldn't figure out like you find it you you find it after you listen to that song that had you crying in the dark I remember um what is that song with her and little Kim who go by the side for you right hand high for you because of you I've inherited what I can love you I can love you right so you know she's in a love triangle and I know with Little Kim, for me, Little Kim being in that song darkened it so much more because of what we all know Little Kim went through with Biggie Smalls. I mean, Little Kim was a 14 year old with Biggie. I mean, just when you're talking somebody's first love, who you gave everything to, who you never let go of, I mean, loyal to him in life and death to the point where when his wife, Faith Evans, allegedly cheated on him, you know, Little Kim was was still on the side, like like publicly, like 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 it's, 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 it's me and Biggie, it's me and Papa, you know? And, you know, the colorism, the everything that hit little Kim, the being on the side, even though she put him first, like for, for just just for life. So like, you know, when she says um, right hand high for you, um, she had to go to court and testify and lie under oath. For Biggie. She put herself in so much trouble. There were so many times where she flexed so much loyalty to the point where she actually did end up serving time. And it's just like, who's going to love you like I do? Who's going to treat you like I do? Like, come on, man. I give you everything. I, sac I hurt myself so that you feel no pain. I die so that you can live. I'm sad so that you can be happy. And there's just, oh my God, you guys, you guys can go listen to the song. Um, but these are all examples of dark femininity. It's beautiful. It doesn't have to be bitter and broken. Uh, I don't know why this is coming up. Maybe because, excuse me, maybe because I was talking about, um, little Kim, but the song fighter by Christina Aguilera, cause you know, they, they love each other. They've done work together multiple times. They've worked together. Um, but that song fighter by Christina Aguilera. The song Beautiful by Christina Aguilera. Um, that's all dark femininity. So there's power and there's healing in that. And it's not light and fluffy. It's, it's you know, it, it's shadow work. It's the dark stuff. So I hope I have con conveyed this point. I love these women. They're powerful to me. Um, they have shaped me. They've all had a hand in raising me from Alanis Morissette all the way down through the Mary J. Blige's Little Kim's, Christina Aguilera's. It's just <sighs> like the song, you know, Come On Over, right, uh, by Christina Aguilera is clearly light femininity or white femininity, light. I, I prefer to say light, right? 
uh, what a girl wants is light femininity, a genie in a bottle. You know, I would say that's gray, but if I had to choose a color, light femininity. Okay, but something like, you know, I'm beautiful no matter what they say, words can't bring me down. That's dark femininity. So again, when people look at you, black women, and when they say, oh, you're protesting, you're masculine. Oh, you're fighting against something. Oh, that's masculine. Women aren't supposed to fight. Women aren't supposed to. They are depending on you not knowing the power of your femininity. They're depending on you not knowing the difference between masculinity and femininity. But in reality, there is dark femininity and light femininity, and you have the effing right to perform both. Do not let these men talk you out of your power. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Don't let them confuse you. Keep your power and and exercise whatever level of femininity you need to. Sometimes African-American women go through things that are so unique and so deeply personal and painful that... We're in our dark feminine. And sis, that is okay. Sis, that is okay. Can I tell you a secret? That's part of the reason women all around the world love African-American culture. And they're women. So it's not like they're just walking around, crip walking and, 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 and listening to men. You know, a lot of them are singing African-American female songs. They, they, they feel it. You know, when they're, when they're singing Whitney Houston, it's not right, but it's okay. That song literally is like a gray femininity, like because it's it's dark, it's light and dark. It's coming through that darkness, and that's the result, like the healing, like you know, you cheated on me. It's not right. It's it, but it's okay. I'm gonna make it anyway, right? She's letting him go. It's hard. It's sad. It's painful. She's she's talking at him, you know. So why why did two one three show up on your caller ID when you said that you you know Friday night you and your boys went out to eat and blah 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 only two of you had dinner what what kind of cheap were you guys you know I found that credit card receipt right you guys whoo I just get so mad when I see these conversations on YouTube and they shame black women out of their position. I see these panel conversations that happen, whether they're in or outside of the manosphere. And, you know, the African-American women, you know, they get passionate and they do their thing. And the men bring them to heal by saying, oh, well, you're acting masculine. That's cap. That's not true. If anything, they're acting effeminate because you hear them on the panels losing control and screaming and, you know, you're talking, I mean, chaos magic. <laughs> I mean, if effeminate, right? I mean, in the first place, you're up there arguing and yelling, you know, you sound like, a, you know, both gender sounding like moms talking to their rebellious kids. I'm like, okay, dads only have to tell their kids something one time. Daddy will give that because they know that, you know, kids will run over their mom because, you know, whatever, mommy's love. But, you know, even male teachers, I was a school teacher for about a decade and I just would see male teachers like not have to struggle as much with misbehaving children as women did. You know, we would have to nag and we would have to talk and and raise our voices and say things over and over again. And so when I see these men doing that on a panel, I was like, oh, I know that. <laughs> That's what my coworkers had to do, you know, to get their kindergartners, you know, to to uh, form a single file, you know, single file line. <laughs> Come on, brother. That's not that. Mm -mm -mm. Do not. Oh, you guys don't let them convince you that you're acting masculine because you're going off. You have the right to go off in full dark femininity form. So um, that's all I got to say. Um, definitely if you want to get in touch with your dark feminine, some of these Mary J. Blige songs are really, really going to do it for you and you'll feel the power. You will feel the power. Speaking of feel the power, there's a song called, I can't make you love me. You can't make your heart feel something. It won't dark femininity. There's healing and transformation in that. I am up at a unicorn and I thank you for spending these 15 minutes with me. If you benefited anything from this video, please like it and share it because it, it just means so much to me. That's what's going to help me. All right, y'all. I'm up at a unicorn and I'm out. Let me know what you think about this video below. I'll see you in the comment section or correspond with you in the comment section. I won't really see you, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>